Yes, sir. Good morning, everyone. I have no actual or potential conflict of interest or any financial interest in relation to this presentation. So diabetes mellitus, it affects most of the population worldwide where India and China have the most number of diabetics. And worldwide, this was 425 million people in the year 2017. And if such a lifestyle continues, it is estimated to grow around 629 million in the year 2045, thus making this disease a global burden. So brief backdrop, it is an important cause of concern. And in the eye, it causes diseases like retinopathy, cataract, glaucoma, and uh, there's a lesser research pathology, which is known as diabetic keratopathy. So hypothesis that if the HbA1c levels increase, it leads to impaired uh, corneal epithelial barrier function. Also leads to formation of a collagen cross-linking bonds, which leads to increased corneal thickness and biochemical changes. According to the figure, we can see that if a healthy cell is subjected to hyperglycemia and insulin resistance, it leads to formation of reactive oxygen species. And because of uh, certain uh, reactions occurring there, it leads to oxidative stress. And uh, because of this, the blood cell properties are altered. And finally, there occurs corneal decompensation and damage to the uh, corneal cells. So the central corneal thickness is an index of corneal hydration and metabolism, and also is an indicator of patency of endothelial pump. And also in various studies, it is found that diabetes is associated with higher intraocular pressures, thus making it a uh, patient putting at risk of uh, open angle glaucoma. So various studies have been conducted from the year 2006 to 2017, where it shows that there are increased central corneal thickness in diabetics, and the risk of glaucoma increases by 5% every year post the diagnosis, and the intraocular pressure values are definitely more when there is poor metabolic control of the disease. So this study is aimed to correlate central corneal thickness intraocular pressure with the serum levels of glycosylated hemoglobin. This was a prospective study where 200 eyes of 100 patients under the age group 30 to 80 years of either gender were included, and all the patients were subjected to a comprehensive ophthalmic examination with, and with applanation tonometry. The glycosylated hemoglobin values where the cutoff was set at 8% according to ADA guidelines, and central corneal thickness was done by an IDEC NT530P non-contact tonopachymeter. So the patients included uh, were all diabetics which, who had fasting glucose levels more than 126 milligram per deciliter, HbA1c levels more than 6.5%, and the examination by a physician was mandatory. The patient with any positive history for corneal disease, any previous use of hard contact lens, anterior segment surgery, laser treatment to cornea, using any chronic topical medications, or with history of trauma to the eye were excluded. The correlation of all the parameters was done using Carl Pearson's correlation coefficient. A two paired unpaired student t-test was done to compare the groups. Confidence interval was set at 95% and the level of significance was less than 0.05. There were 47 males and 53 females in the study, thus making the gender distribution almost equal. On comparing the values and the parameters of two eyes, the level was not significant. Therefore, either of the eye could be used for the study and we used right eye in the study. So these were the average HbA1c values for groups one and two being less than 8% HbA1c and more than eight HbA1c. So these charts show the corrected IOP values in right eye for groups one and two, along with the central corneal thickness. The average values are shown here for 100 patients. So on correlating HbA1c and central corneal thickness for, the, for 100 patients, the uh, result was significant and it showed a positive correlation. Also, we can see in the graph that there's a linear increment signifying that uh, as HbA1c values increase, the central corneal thickness also increases. Similarly, for corrected intraocular pressure, again, the result obtained was significant with p-value of 0.03. And again, we can see a linear increment in the value for the 100 patients. On comparing the two groups, we can observe that in uh, group one for central corneal thickness, the result is more significant as compared to group two. Similarly, for collected intraocular pressure, again, the values were significant, but this time for group two, the values were more significant as compared to group one. So to conclude, then, in patients with type two diabetes with poor metabolic control, higher HbA1c values were positively related to central corneal thickness and corrected intraocular pressure values in a statistically significant way. And there is a linear increment obtained when comparing the two groups for corrected intraocular pressure, which means as HbA1c increases, the intraocular pressure values also increases. But for central coronal thickness, the linear increment was obtained in group one, but with patients with poor metabolic control, the central coronal thickness values were variable.
So knowledge of these diabetes associated changes in corneal parameters and intraocular pressure and their monitoring may prevent vision loss by enabling early detection and treatment. Thank you. So the mechanisms actually are not understood very well, but the hypothesis that it is there that uh, not because of thickness, it is because that there is damage because of HbA1c levels when they increase, these leads to formation of various bonds and also the uh, reactive oxygen species are released. So these leads to finally decompensation of the cells. So in our study when the HbA1c values were more than 8%, so there were variable results. Few used to increase, few used to remain stable. So we cannot comment that if thickness is definitely increasing or not. No, not in our study. We didn't do the study for glaucoma patients. We just did the study to correlate that whether this was being done or not. In other study, it was found that yes, risk of glaucoma increases, but we are planning to do uh, pursue that further using OCT. Any patient who turned out a frankly glaucomatous? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. No. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ma'am, Ehlers formula. Ehlers formula. No, ma'am, there is no standard formula. Yes, I agree to that. Uh, but we stuck to one formula and uh, use Ehlers formula.